In this video, we're talking about what electrical engineers do. Old demons. What the hell? And we're starting right now. Hey, 1% Nation, I'm Jake Voorhees. Welcome back to the channel and episode 102 of the 1% Engineer Show, where we empower young engineers to rise to the top 1% of their career. So if you wanna be the best engineer you can be, make sure you subscribe. Electrical engineers design, develop, test, research and may supervise the manufacturing and or installation of electrical equipment and components or systems for commercial, industrial, military, or scientific use. Like most engineering fields, electrical engineering is hugely broad and you could work in multiple different industries or sectors. This includes from electrical power generation and distribution to cars and smartphones. Electrical engineers are an integral part of thousands of companies. Later, we'll discuss the eight subgroups of types of electrical engineering that you may work on. But for now, I want you to understand the big three, which is electricity, electronics, and electricity and magnetism. An electrical engineer is a professional who applies the physics and mathematics of electricity of these three, electricity, electronics, and electromagnetism to design and develop new electronic equipment and systems to solve problems and to test equipment. That's what we're here as engineers, guys, to solve problems and develop solutions for those problems in the world. The emergence of the modern age is noted by the introduction of electricity to homes, businesses, and industries of which all of this is technologically made possible by electrical engineers. But this field hasn't been around that long. Historically, we see the vacuum tube as the first aspect of electrical engineering. This was the beginning of it all. Other early electrical engineers may work on things like the electronic telegraph or the telephone or basic aspects of power generation in general. Today, modern electrical engineers work in very exciting fields and may work on things like robotics or drones or solar power, radar or other navigation systems, connected personal tech, like smartwatches and body implants. They may work on holographic displays, space exploration, wireless power, solar electricity, you name it. Anything that uses technology today and has a physical counterpart oftentimes is accompanied by the work of an electrical engineer. What is your dream job, your dream role, which may be possible to do as an electrical engineer? Comment below. Now you know the definition, you've heard a little bit of history, but what are some of the tasks and the duties that you may perform as an electrical engineer, an EE? When you begin any engineering career, you begin with the fundamentals of that industry, and these also align specifically for the sector where you got your first job. In any of these sectors or any of these industries, an electrical engineer may find themselves doing any of the following in a role. They may prepare technical drawings, specifications of electrical systems, or topographical maps to, to ensure the installation and operations conform to standards and customer requirements. EEs may be communicating with other engineers on their projects. And this could include communicating with customers or other individuals to discuss existing or potential engineering projects or products. EEs may design, implement, maintain, or improve electrical instruments, equipment, facilities, components, products, or systems for commercial, industrial, or domestic purposes. They could conduct field surveys or study maps, graphs, diagrams, or other data to identify and correct power system problems. They may direct or coordinate manufacturing, construction, installation, maintenance, support, documentation or testing activities, codes or customer requirements. And finally, electrical engineers may be compiling data and write reports regarding existing or potential electrical engineering studies or projects. Now that you understand the tasks or the duties that may be a part of your electrical engineering role, let's get into the eight. Let's get into the eight subfields within electrical engineering. This is not uncommon in engineering, guys. Civil engineering, which I am, has five core fields. And I think within mechanical engineering, when I did that video, there were as many as 12 different industries where you could work as a mechanical engineer. Because engineers touch everything that is on this planet, we are part of everything. And so the aspects in which you could work are just entirely broad. So let's kick it right off with subgroup number one, which is power. Power engineering deals with the generation, transmission, and distribution of electricity, as well as the design of other related devices within power. These include transformers, electric generators, electric motors, high voltage engineering, and power electronics. In many regions of the world, governments maintain an electrical network called a power grid that connects a variety of generators together with users of their energy. And lots of engineers work within this power grid. I'm sure you guys have heard lots about it. Subgroup number two, control. Control engineering focuses on the modeling of a diverse range of dynamic systems and the design of controllers that will cause these systems to behave in the desired manner. To implement such controllers, electrical engineers may use electronic circuits, 
digital signal processors, and programmable logic controllers, or PLCs. Control engineering has a wide range of applications from the flight and propulsion systems of commercial airliners to the cruise control present in many modern automobiles. It also plays an important role in industrial automation practices. Subgroup number three, electronics. Electronic engineering involves the design and testing of electronic circuits that use the properties of components such as resistors, capacitors, inductors, diodes, and transistors to achieve a particular functionality. The tune circuit, for example, is what allows the user of a radio to filter out all but a signal station. And this is just one example of how circuits work. Subgroup number four, micro and nano electronics. Microelectronics engineering deals with the design and microfabrication of very small electronic circuit components for the use of an integrated circuit or sometimes for other use of their own general electronic components. The most common microelectronic component is a semiconductor transistor, although all main electronic components such as resistors and capacitors can be created at a microscopic level. Nanoelectronics is the further scaling down of microelectronics in this field. This gets down to the nanometer level. Modern devices are already in the nanometer regime with below 100 nanometer processing, having been the standard since around 2002. The last time I checked for CPUs, how small the transistors are, it's down to single digit nanometer in size. Subgroup number five is signals. Signal processing deals with the analysis and manipulation of signals. For analog signals, Processing may involve the amplification and filtering of audio signals for audio equipment or the modulation or demodulation of signals for telecommunications. For digital signals, signal processing may involve the compression, error detection, and error correction of digitally sampled signals. Subgroup number six, telecommunications. Telecommunications engineering focuses on the transmission of information across a telecommunication channel. This could be through a coax cable, optical fiber, or just free space. For example, radio waves, and radar can go out into the open air. We send signals out into outer space. It's totally open air. Transmissions across free space require information to be encoded in a carrier signal to shift the information to a carrier frequency suitable for transmission. This is known as modulation. Engineers are responsible for this technology. Popular analog modulation technique include amplitude modulation and frequency modulation. Guys, this is where AM and FM radio come from. And as you can see, frequency modulation is much more powerful than amplitude amplitude modulation because FM radio waves are stronger and can travel further than AM. The choice of modulation affects the cost and performance of a system, and these two factors must be balanced carefully by the engineer. Subgroup number seven, instrumentation. Instrumentation engineering deals with the design of devices to measure physical quantities, such as pressure, flow, and temperature. The design of such instruments requires a good understanding of physics that often extends beyond electromagnetic theory. For example, flight instruments measure variables such as wind speed and altitude to enable pilots the control of aircraft analytically. Pilots barely even fly their own planes anymore, guys. Other applications could be measuring the temperature between two points, the friction between two points. Anything that requires instrumentation is something that an electrical engineer has established. Subgroup number eight is computers. Computer engineering is its own field entirely. However, computer and electrical engineering are so similar that I've had multiple friends from multiple universities double major in electrical and computer engineering with only taking one additional class or two additional classes not even a full extra semester because the crossover is so thorough. So we'll talk about this when we get into the professional engineering exam for electrical engineers later in this video, but the two fields are so similar. And that's why computer engineering actually is a subfield within electrical engineering and vice versa. Computer engineering deals with the design of computers and computer systems. This may involve the design of new hardware, the design of PDAs, and supercomputers for the use of computers to control an industrial plant. Computer engineers may also work on a system software. However, the design of complex software systems is often the domain of software engineering, programmers, computer scientists, which is usually considered a separate discipline. Desktop computers represent a tiny fraction of the devices a computer engineer may work with as computer-like architectures, which may be found in a wide range of devices today. Okay, now that you understand the subgroups within electrical engineering and what you might be working on, what you might be doing in the job, let's actually talk about the work environment. What is it like to be an electrical engineer? Electrical engineers work in a lot of different areas, labs, offices, mines, power plants, and more. They're needed to design, plan, and supervise multiple projects. On-site work is equally as important, but it won't be your only work environment in this sector. Areas such as defense need adaptable workers who can work in various environments 
If you're new and young in this industry, it's an advantage. We need creative thinkers who can look at a problem within these different environments and come up with creative solutions. A lot of electrical engineers have an opportunity to travel. And again, this may be between your office and different project plants or research locations or mines or visiting client partnerships, whatever it may be. But I traveled as a civil engineer, mechanical engineers travel, electrical engineers do too. Oftentimes you're gonna be in an office early on. You're gonna be working inside of a software ecosystem. You may be using some sort of design software like CAD. You may be working inside of a coding environment as well. A lot of electrical engineers need to know a decent bit of coding. And depending on the role that you have, depending on the sector or the type of company that you work for, there's going to be a balance of, of software ecosystem, of coding environments, of testing and actually going out on site or getting in the lab and actually looking at, at what you did in the design software or what you did in your coding environment. You may be doing one of these three types of workflows or be working with a team that's working with many of these. In my experience, most most early engineers work within software ecosystems pretty heavily. If you're someone who wants to be on site or out on the field all the time, there are electrical engineering roles where you could achieve this. So now that you understand some of the basics of what engineers do day by day and the work environments they may be in, let's talk about the channels for your career. And this also heavily links into the professional engineering exam. Any engineer early on needs to decide if they're going to be a technical expert within their field or if they want to become a project manager and go for leadership. Both are great choices. It's more like choosing the one that's right for you. If you're better at communication, if you like working in teams, if you don't mind picking up the phone and calling a client and things like this, then being a project manager may be a better fit for you. And so a few years into your career, you may end up having one person that you are helping to coordinate. An intern might be under you. And then eventually three to five years in, you may become an early project manager where you may have a few junior engineers with you. Now, technical experts are going to be the ones who really become true elite users of of their software environments, they become even better with their coding, they may even be doing things outside of their work environment that makes them better at this. A lot of technical experts get their master's degree where they travel to technical conferences where they're constantly learning about how to be the best practitioner within their industry lane that they possibly can. And this is why I wanna talk about the professional engineering exam quite a bit because a lot of electrical engineers do not actually get their PE. They don't design things in the sense that a civil engineer or a mechanical engineer is constantly creating a plan to design an actual part or plans to design an actual bridge. Electrical engineers are not always working on the creation of a new physical product. So after doing a research study, I found that few actually get their PE. Now, if you want to be on course for management and in your career, you'd rather be a more of a communicator and be a team lead, then getting that PE is very important because you have to stamp your plan, your name, your credibility has to be on the documents that you give a, a project if there is design involved. It's gonna help you when you're going for promotions. So if you're somebody who is an engineer who may be thinking about your MBA, instead of a technical master's, then getting your PE is pretty important. There's only three types of PE exams for electrical engineers, and one is actually the computer engineering exam, so really only two. The first one is called electrical and computer, focusing on computer engineering. The second one is electronics controls and communications. And the third one is electrical and computer, specifically focusing on power. So the body that provides the professional engineering exam believes that there's more jobs and more need for a specific PE exam for power power than anything else. I think that's interesting. I think you guys should note that as well. Now that you understand the work environment and the lanes of career progression that you could have and the values, pros and cons of getting your PE or having someone on your team having their PE, let's talk about what professional engineering design might look like for electrical engineering. Many engineers will be involved with the design of these products and applications, but electrical engineers are specifically working on a section of that product that is for them. The computer, tablet, or smartphone you purchased recently is a master piece of electrical engineering design. The way the circuit boards all connect and communicate to each other is a perfect example of what EEs can do. Robots are comprised of sensors, actuators, microcompressors, and sophisticated feedback control systems designed by electrical engineers. Space projects, deep space communication, robust control systems, extraterrestrial GPS for navigation and positioning, power generation and storage networks, imaging systems, and finally, sophisticated medical technology that you encounter in a modern hospital, including CT, MRI, and PET imaging machines, ECG, and blood pressure monitors are all based off of the work of electrical engineers. So I felt it was necessary to list off a couple of the applications that you could see happen if you end up working for a company that designs products 
for the electrical engineering industry. I hope that video helped you guys. What do electrical engineers do? If you're an engineer who wants to rise to the top 1% of your career, I make videos for your engineering success, so make sure you subscribe. Comment below if I missed anything, or if you have another question around electrical engineering, I can make a video about that. If you want the 1% engineer kit, which is five eBooks for your success, and access to the Facebook group, which is now 1,600 engineers, follow the links in the description. Make sure you like this video, guys. It really helps as I'm getting back to YouTube now. Thanks again, guys, and stay hungry on your quest to become a 1% engineer. Cheers.